<laughs> you had one job. <laughs> so you managed to uh, get the sword, and uh, as you pull yourself in the chest out of the, the surf, a few minutes later, the rest of the crew starts to show up. Uh, last yeah. of which will be uh, will be Bender in his boat. <laughs> Out amongst the, the waves, you can see the uh, Chalice ship has disengaged and the siren song is very quickly sinking to a watery grave. Along with all the dead bodies that are in the bilges. All the no. souls of Captain Pass lost once again. Someday, in another game, I'll have the crew, like, I'll have my players find a shipwreck, and it will be just all the dead captains they have to fight. Oh, none of them will be able to defeat Ragnar. Except anyone with magic. <laughs> Captain Avon, when he, uh, as he comes ashore and says, uh, Captain, I believe you dropped something. So the, uh, the Chelish, having disengaged from your ship, begin to swing about and head towards the shore. Sendar is like, we should probably get into the fucking jungle and hide. As soon as we get on shore, I give uh, AA Rick my invigorate potion. Since he gave me a potion. Right. Thank you. The feels. <laughs> well, if we're going to hit... Uh... Sure, then I get. I think it's 14 health back. Yeah, it caps out, I know that much. Yeah, yeah I remember, I forget what it is, I've never used it before. <laughs> Pretty sure. Uh, two, two yeah, two hit points, points per, per level. level. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Do, 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 do. Alright, so you guys have gotten the shore. You uh, make for the jungle and hide. The Chelish make a single pass, and then. Uh, Realizing that they've done what they have came to do, sail off into the storm. You uh, gave the command. Uh, still with enough time left that you were able to salvage 15 bros. Uh, the rest were either killed in the fighting or killed in the attempt to escape. Yeah, you get to do the other job of picking 15 that will live. I'm just going to pick the bottom 15. Might as well. Now they can be promoted. First things first, we train those jokers. So no, the, uh... first things first is uh, get the fuck out of the jungle <laughs> somewhere we can, you know, not be. Jungles don't bode well for this group. No, it didn't bode well for the other group. <laughs> yeah, when you guys were fucking around the juggle, I was at Ricky Squibs enjoying a drink with Ashira. <laughs> I was getting attacked by the challenge and teleported. Hey, are you, fucking nowhere. The fond memories? You're, you're kind of wishing you were back in a bar with Ashira just having drinks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I ever leave bars. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Gather around, and Sandar will do some heals. <laughs> I've only used one, so <laughs> Ooh. what in the ass? Seventy-nine for my count. That's what I got too. The important part is. A Rick won't die from his own fucking rage. <laughs> yeah, I release rage now. I like what to think a traumatizing that traumatizing experience. I like I like to think that Kyrie was like drowning, but she still had calm emotions active, so she's just really calmly just about to die. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, well, at least when I die, nobody will be trying to. Kill I've me. heard that drowning is the worst way, the most painful way to die. I guess I'll find out soon. <laughs> but... All right, so 
you all lived. Congratulations. Yeah, I was out to murder somebody there, but y'all uh, y'all stayed the course. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> of course, because of ship. I get it. At least we killed that axe guy. He was really, really making me angry. Pretty sure oh, no, didn't you didn't kill him. him. Did you find a body? Yeah. Yeah, was there a body? Nope. <laughs> there was a second shooter. <laughs> the magic bullet. But well, really, that, that, was a, well, that was a pretty crazy fucking fight, guys. Well, let's, uh... Oh, fuck, I don't know. Roll survival and try to fucking make our way out of jungle. <laughs> Well, luckily for you, you have a bro, well, not a bro, uh, a lone crew member who might actually be useful now. Also, let me see, from the ship itself, Krupp died. Yeah, Krupp is dead. Uh, uh, there, was, there was Mila and Cogward that weren't... Uh... Yeah, Cog Cogward's dead. He, he's one of the unfortunate casualties. Okay. And then there was Mila, who was uh, the mercenary. Mila, who was uh, in the background providing range support the entire time. Cogward died. Yeah. Yep. Cogward's dead. Croup is dead. Mila survived. And Sendar survived. Yep. And Jeets. Uh. It's never easy. And this is where you tell us that this was an impossible fight to win, that it's designed to see how the characters deal with losing and defeat and all that stuff. It wasn't an impossible fight to win. Um, yeah. But it was built so that it was four out of five times going to be a lose. I mean... And the point to this is Besides Ashira, right now, everyone else in this party is new, right? All the original plot lines are essentially severed. There's no... Nothing tying anyone here to the story, right? So to, to continue on with what is actually going on in the entirety of the adventure path, it's just kind of pointless at this point, right? Uh -huh. Need some sort of catalyst. <laughs> so, the first order of business was to put some motivation in you. Besides, let's sail around the seas and be fucking pirates. So now, you have a mortal fucking nemesis who has pretty much taken everything from you. Not that you earned anything that you were had you all this was inherited by other characters ultimately anyways yeah i technically gave you that ship so <laughs> all right so, hey, all right dial it back brian i did <laughs> i gave you that ship <laughs> did you really think i needed an escort to, t to the tidewater rock <laughs> you, you gave me your hand-me-downs okay you got a better <laughs> ship so the best way to give players something to hate is to rape the living shit out of them. People hate rape. Dude, now, rape is so bad. <laughs> you could have not ran, in which everybody would have died. That's what I was which really afraid been of. Unfortunate. Uh, I had toyed with the idea of doing a, oh, you all got captured scenario, but then I remembered early in the adventure path the party comes upon a ship, a cellist ship, the one that Brian captured for his uh, smaller cellist warship that fought pirates, and when those pirates surrendered, they locked them inside the ship and set it on fire. So the cellist are not ones for taking prisoners from pirates. That was Ragnar, so wasn't it? <laughs> well, am I still that, paying for Ragnar's sins? I mean, te well, remember, you were on the Siren Song. You haven't scripted it yet, so it has all of Ragnar's reputation still on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ragnar, the guy who hired a spy to spy on the Chelish, then got caught, and you had to uh, now, sell out Raziel to get away. I mean, 
Also remember that you also did fucking scuttle that ship <laughs> just recently, and they knew about that. You're, you yeah, definitely showed crew... that you are, you definitely showed that you weren't uh, a uh... yeah. But we spared the crew in lifeboats in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> uh, there's a reason they're called lifeboats. Yeah, that's where they, that scene in the movie where you you slowly starve to death. <laughs> hey, they obviously turned out okay. Yeah, they were lucky. They got they found they got found by this ship that fucks you that raped you guys. So yeah. the other introduction here is to now that you're not like one through five anymore. Magic is a motherfucker, right? They are able to keep track of you by a scrying, which is a fourth level spell mm -hmm. or third level spell. Then scrying is a uh, fourth level. Captain Scrying is fourth level? Alright. Yep, it's fourth level. So they're able to track you by scrying. And then once they caught up to you, they are able to use magic that will very shortly be available to some of you. Control water to root your ship. Uh, control water to let them fucking charge downhill at you with a ship. So I figured when I read the control water rules, yep. it's like, yep, that's what they did. Yeah, I mean, you could have canceled it with yours, but that would have used your imposition for the day. And honestly, the that call lightning storm thing was pretty fucking badass. <laughs> yeah, yep. I thought about I thought about using another ten to just stay on the ship, fight it out, but because but, then if you use the control water, you can evaporate water too. No, you can only raise and lower it. Yeah. But um, Lower the, 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 boat. the other issue is impositions. Lower. You can only do one per day. So like once you use the call lightning, yeah. you can't use another one. Yeah. That prevents people from just dumping all their points in one combat. Yeah. Yeah. When Wes was like, "Hey, you guys are level seven. Act like it," and I was like, "Well, we haven't used disrepute. Hey, here's a thing." Yeah, I was. I honestly, the the when you did the call lightning, I was like, that. I mean, for one, that probably is what. You know, kept you guys alive through the fucking uh, the axe guy because you guys. The only option you guys really have, since you guys are almost all melee, is just to pump damage faster than he, he can rape death. you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, he was uh, big, bad, and wearing adamantine armor, so he was fucking right. Had high EC and was eating a good, a fair bit of your damage yeah. each turn. Right. And I mean, at this point, it's not just magic. Like at this point, you're supposed to, you you have you can build up resources and stuff, like, you know, things you, you find through your adventure, like the Feather Fan, which obviously kept you guys from being raped, you know, earlier. <laughs> In the middle of uh, the open water. Yeah, it would have been, well, it, the bad part was, it was literally after the, um, if, if they hadn't done that and they fought there instead, they would have been fighting after nearly getting wrecked by the, um, the Bearded Devils. Yep, spells still would have been expended. Yeah, Heels spell would have been expended. Right. It, so, I mean, doing the Feather Fan definitely kept it from being just a total wipe super early. And, like, honestly, with I mean, you do have, even though the share wasn't there, you did have a 7th level Arcane Caster that does have a, gr a, a reasonable variety of spells. It's just, obviously, mm -hmm. Darren is not familiar with all of his capabilities yet. Like, for example, Hound Archon. I would suggest you look up that monster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I, I mean, I stated before that freaking uh, summon, summon, like a summon monster build is like it requ like being a caster requires you to be a, you know very familiar with your spells. I mean, Bill, you kind of know that you're trying to learn your spells as you go, mm -hmm. and summon monster requires you to know your spells. Plus, you need to know the monster manual. <laughs> so, <I'm> trying. <laughs> yeah, the the Hound Archon in this instance would have been a, a pretty good mainstay against the Marines. Yeah, it would have helped against... Uh, yeah. those, those Summon Monster 3s would have been better spent on a Lantern Archon, which literally flies and has touch. two 30-foot <laughs> ray touch attacks each round. Yeah. I mean, you guys, um, I mean, as a crew, like, my, like you obviously had Eric with you, and Eric's obviously built for just mowing things down. Eventually, he runs out of HP, though. And you guys are mostly either hybrids or sort of um, or casters, which means you're once you fight against things that have really high AC, like heavy armor, shield uh, phalanxes and stuff, you, you will start running into, well, issues. You have to find ways to kind of get around it. And there's spells for it, and there's, you know, 
ways to build. There's magic items, and there's consumables, and all sorts of other things you can kind of consider and research. I mean, that's kind of what I've been doing. Like, literally, every, every after every session, I'm usually doing research and figuring out stuff. And I mean, I do the same thing for uh, Bill's uh, Shadowrun like, campaign as well. Y'all don't see it, but, like, Brian just never stops asking questions. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I annoy Wes more than often. <laughs> but just constantly talking to him. <laughs> so, I, yeah, if, if I don't, like, if I don't wake up to, like, two or three messages from Brian, then I'm probably going to think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was looking into enchantments and ways to make my gauntlets better, specifically yeah. the rust one, because I knew heavy armor is going to be a problem for a lot of that, us. That is definitely something you guys can take should take advantage of, is the fact that you do have a crafter in your crew, um, and that that literally reduces cost by half. I just didn't right. have the gold to actually do it. Yeah. Are, are we gonna? Is there anything more playing? Because I gotta I gotta start getting going. Uh Well, I guess you guys need to figure out. City at least, but uh. Figure out what you guys are gonna do. Like I we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't explicitly need you if you're willing to let uh, Bender or another person. Yeah. Since you're technically not on a ship, then it's really anybody could fucking take the lead on this. Yeah, but like um, the girlfriend's at the bar right now, so you go to DD or home. So I'll be right. back in a little bit if you guys are still going. No problem. All good, man. All right. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, honestly, don't I, get discouraged. Like I, this I'll fight went really out. well. <laughs> yeah, man. You still have another ship being squibbed right now. Man, it's a kick-ass one. It's uh doesn't have as many decks, but uh it's worth more and it takes less crew. And has tons of siege. Yeah, it does. So that gives you a ship that you earned through a fight that you're getting squibbed right now that is yours completely. When you get back to the island, you're like, hey, name this thing. You'll be able to name it, and it will be all yours. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. So, and then, of course, the the fourth or third point getting to is resources. So, a lot of people have just been sitting on hero points. Every time you level, they go to waste. All that fucking disrepute's been stored up. Uh... There is loot that's just disappeared because it was not tracked or cared for. It's a lot. Uh, there was there was a magic item obtained from the uh, captain that flew in and attacked the fucking tower. There was a magic item that was essentially a magic astrolabe that would have given you the ability to navigate through the storm with all sorts of bonuses. And since that was just never tracked, it's not on anybody's sheet, nobody's mentioned it, after I called it out, it's gone. Yep. So, the lesson there is, pay attention to your loot. If you get something, don't just be like, oh, yay, and then forget about it. Because I'm not, I'm not going to remind you that you have loot laying around your bloody adventures. I expect you to... Like, of all the things I expect any character or player to ever care about, it's shiny shit and murder. <laughs> so along with that, the almost 20,000 golds worth of yep. loot from uh, the majority of that battle at the tower has kind of just disappeared as well, too, since nobody tracked that. That was a lot of money. <laughs> No, I, I definitely expected at least one character to die. And, uh. Came close. A few of us got damn close. I mean, the, the oh, biggest. Man. The most difficult thing to get a party to do is realize they're in over their head and retreat. Because they will always think that an encounter is designed around them and expect it to be something that's winnable. Now, this fight was winnable, it's just. You would have to be prepped for it. After that first volley of attacks that I absorbed, I knew that it yep. wasn't going to end well. Yeah, it's there's there's definitely uh, tactics you can do to try to make things get better, and I mean that's something you know you guys as a group can figure out. I mean, you're master at arms, and part of the thing is master at arms is to train the crew, <laughs> so you could definitely figure out. Hey, let's uh, you can even have a a Rick draw a map of your ship and be like, all right, let's uh, use this as a tactical map and figure out what the thing what all fucked up, <laughs> and go from there. 
at the very least, you could get very familiar with how the um, how these guys fight. And since they're obviously the people that fucked you over, you may if you ever intend on going after them, might as well go over what they've done and what they're capable of. Yeah, we're just gonna put their names on the list because uh, the people that killed Blue, they're they're tops on my list. <laughs> I'm just angry that group died. <laughs> yep, I uh, I rolled randomly for all the the NPCs on the deck, and he he caught a big fat one. Yep, that sucks. The feels. Alright, so, uh, Damon's like, sinks into a bit of a depression. <laughs> Fucking sits down behind a tree. You guys are probably gonna want to rest for a bit. Yeah, it's probably best. Right. Uh, since uh, you've got a pretty large party, you don't have to worry about predators or anything crazy. Uh, so watch is a non-issue. You guys rest your eight. Uh, by the time you're done resting, the, the worst of the storm has passed. And uh, if there is anything on the ship that you wanted, since it was during a storm and you were not able to, to go back and get it, I will be uh, be generous enough to give you a percentile roll to see if it washes up on shore with some of the debris. Um, do we find a very flamboyant hat with a feather? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, promise is a promise. <laughs> I'll give you 10%. All right. Nope. No head. Oh, well. It's not like you even knew that head existed anyway. <laughs> cool. It would have been cool to have a barbarian wearing Ragnar's hat, though. You need to get a monocle. <laughs> well, man, yeah. if you put on Ragnar's hat, I would have made your role for possession versus the ghost of Ragnar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, then I would have to kill you. <laughs> and that would be the irony of it. Yep. Alright. <clears throat> so, sure, the, the storm passes. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay. <laughs> no. The city's all wet and nasty because the roads aren't really paved that well. It's all just like dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're just, uh, anything else you want to do in, in betwixt your... Let me see. I'll take a look real quick. Uh, this is not the right one. Where's my, uh, is it downtime? Oh, wait, that is right. Uh, oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was just seeing if I can um, find a uh, gun. More likely, it's obviously not going to be from S Sink or Natives, but possibly from like a, a pirate or ah, sailor yes. that's in the, that's possibly in port. Let just a pistol's fine. That is why I have that page open. I was like, why do I have this fucking page open? <laughs> it's all good. I need to see if I can actually afford one right now. I've spent a lot of money. I've just recently come into large sums of money. Throw them in the box. <laughs> yeah, I can afford it if it's there. All right. Uh, this place does carry a uh, trait that allows it to uh, have access to exotic items like guns. Oh, wow. Sweet. So just standard prices? So uh, there is a markup since it is a non- uh, or right, right. not a fucking exotic item, though. Oh, gotcha. 
All right, so uh, about uh, 25% markup. Okay. Uh, does that include the ammo and uh, gunpowder as well? Or black powder? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so that brings the pistol to 1250, and then I will see how much ammo and stuff I'll get. But yeah, I will definitely buy that pistol. Can't be a captain without a pistol to shoot crew members with. You need a tricorn hat and a pistol with one shot. I already have the tricorn hat. Way ahead of you. <laughs> um, as for anything else I'm going to be doing with whatever time I have left before I run into everyone else, um, I'm going to see about getting some info, since I've obviously been hanging out in Sangor a bunch. Um, I, I'm just going to gather information about kind of like, you know, the, the politics and big players that kind of, you know, are in the city. So I guess I'll just do an influencer or something for that. Uh, or is it uh, yeah, knowledge local? Okay. You can do knowledge local as well if uh, you felt like it. I don't know which one's better for me. Uh, I'll do influence. Influence would be the actual gather part. Yeah, I'll do the influence then. Since that's all up to date. So 33. Hardy har har. Alright. <clears throat> we'll uh, get back to you with that. Yeah, no problem. The sheet, the handout should have the actual uh, notable NPCs. Gotcha. So this will be the ones you definitely find out the find right. out about the easiest. Okay. Yeah, and I, I looked over the that one link you showed of it a while back. So I know they right. I know they they're definitely uh, big fans of Gozra and things like that. Yep. I think I've asked this question before, but is Gozra the guy from Ghostbusters 2? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Gozra is a, well, I guess it's gender neutral because it's god and goddess of like oceans and storms and shit. So if you probably don't want to get fucked by storms again, you can always make donations to uh, Gozra. Oh, wait, no, it was Ghostbusters 1. Yeah, you're right. Ghostbusters 1 yeah, was Gozra. Goes 2 was that Goes weird. Gozerian. Dude, Ghostbusters 2 was the uh, weird guy. I don't know his name. Stay puffed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's Ghostbusters Vigo. 1. <laughs> Vigo, yeah. yeah. Oh, Vigo, yeah. yeah. Uh, v uh, Ghostbusters 2 was the one where you uh, had the uh, Statue the of Liberty. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty go active. It was the one yeah. with the, uh, the painting that, that goes like crazy. Yeah, the painting that goes yeah. crazy as well. Shooting fucking lasers. <laughs> While you're doing that, get your pistol and all that stuff. Yep. Snap back to these fellers. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, Avon's kind of just in a, in a bit of a disappointed bucket depression amount at the moment. Sounds about right. So we're going to need, uh, someone else to step up. All right. We need to head back to Sangor. By back to, well, yeah, actually back to. We need to head to Sangor. As quickly as possible, quickly because possible. I've heard that these, uh, nothing good happens in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh. How many people's that boat hold? Or not even, uh, Eric, you want to figure out where you guys are? Do some of that geography? Yeah, I can do that. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, nerd, look at your paper. <laughs> Nerd paper. All right. Consulting one of your handy maps. You determine at the moment you're about a four days walk away from Sangor. Hey, we're about four days from Sangor. It's that way. All right, let's get going then. How many people will fit on that um, rowboat we have, and will that cut any like you know rowing 12. around? If it, 12. it does have a sail, it has a mast that you can erect a sail. It will get twelve people somewhere. Will that cut time off of our trip to go around the shore? Yes, it will. 
but you'll have to leave someone, some people behind. Um, I say we let the bros carry some stuff and walk. I say no. We're going as a group. It's the only reason why we haven't been attacked by fucking monsters and shit in the woods. All right, you're acting captain. I will do as you say. Damn straight. Yeah. All right, so uh, you guys walked for four days and uh, get to Sangor. As you approach, you uh, you find your way to one of the, the roads heading in. And, uh, you see that the storm blasted the shit out of the, the area. Trees are swept over. There's like mud on the walls. Once you get inside, you see some of the poor houses have been flattened. So it looks like uh, it was a pretty gnarly storm. Tubular. When I see a shear, I say, please don't dock my pay, Captain. I'm sorry I'm late. I, I sneeze. So, sure. <laughs> you're, right. uh, you're out and about. Right. And uh, one of your crewmen comes up and says, Captain, I was, uh, I was over in one of the seedier taverns, and uh, you won't guess who I saw walking through the gate. I, I'm at the edge of my seat. Like, Eric, Avon, his little crew, well, about 20 of them, walked in through the gate, dragging a chest, and uh, not looking very good. <sighs> All right. So where are they at? Well, follow me, Captain. I'll show you. All right. I assume we would be heading towards the docks in hopes that uh, Avon's ship was still there. Or Ashira's ship was still there. Yep, that was, uh, that was a general assumption. Okay. So you, uh, you guys meet them. So Ashira, you, uh, you head out, and your crew member leads you away through the city. And sure enough, not too far from the docks, you run into, uh, you see Eric and his big, bald, dark-skinned head bobbing above a lot of the rest of the crowds. Uh, hey, Eric, you're late. Please don't dock my pay, Captain. I'm sorry. And you look like you're you've gone through fucking hell. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, you know, we uh, I, you know, harming uh, Shira's property does uh, dock you pay as well. What boy property? Your property. <laughs> oh, he I'm gets... I'm your property. <laughs> you, okay. you are the property. <laughs> I get it. It's I'm getting it's late. Yeah, you're, yep, you're getting it. You're learning. Got a sunburn. That means damage to government property. <laughs> he gets it. Uh, um, also, something about slavery. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's always hinted. Uh, so I guess I see Bender and about what ten bros. <laughs> about fifteen. 15, 15 bros. You see Sandara, Mila. Avon, right. Irene, Sarah, Eric, Bender, and 15 generic bros. Got it. Uh, Sandara, how are you feeling? I'm, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm alive. That was shitty. I can gather. Uh, so, Bender, what happened? The, uh, Chelish happened. Oh. We got, uh, we got away for a while. They caught up after the storm hit. 
ram the shit out of the, sh the ship, killed the majority of the bros, and, uh, well, Siren Song is at the bottom of the ocean now, and we're pretty fucked. Well, you're alive, I suppose. Yeah, I guess there's that. What happened to Croup? Um, yeah. He, uh, he sort of kind of bolt through the neck and didn't make it. I see. And by sort of, I mean he did, and yeah. He... Yes, yes, I gathered that much. So, did you get anything to identify the, these chelish that attacked you? Um, well, for one, they had a shitload of fucking demons. Devils. Whatever. Yeah, I'll never Bender forget. Bender has no knowledge religion, so, uh... Did you get at least... The, do you at least know the ship name? Fuck. Um... I can give you a hint if you go Roll to the. Check. Uh, <laughs> you go to the, do an intelligence check, or you can check the fucking uh, <laughs> description of the module. That's cheating. <laughs> go for gold. No, it's cash. Three sixteen. Uh, I, I heard something about it being Moloch's Fury or something like that. Yes, that's what it was. I see. Moloch's Fury. They had a shitload of uh, demons. They had. Heavy marines Devils. with uh, swords and shields, de or whatever. Uh, heresy abound. And... Alright, so... Moloch's... Sorry, what was the name again? Moloch's Fury. Okay. They had well, a, uh, we almost killed one dude. Uh, Caniff, I think his name was, had a big fuck off axe. Um, I think he personally killed like ten bros by himself, just swinging it around like crazy. Hmm. So how did Eric do? Um, acceptable. He got stabbed a lot. Yeah, he was a good pincushion. All right. But well. he also disintegrated the uh, Chelish Marines. Not as well as Kenneth did, <laughs> but he did a good job. I see. Well, so the Siren Song's finally dead. Wow. Now, if... Uh, well, I guess it's Lord now. If Lord Avon loses his island, then he'll lose everything I've kind of given to him. That'd be like full circle. Well, in any case... What do you plan on doing uh, now? You, you became popular enough to attract the Chalish. Yeah, well... Hmm, how should I put this? Uh, you know what, it, it'll be better off for later, and I prefer not to speak ill of the captain <laughs> when he's sitting right here. Yeah, fine. Or whatever he's doing. <laughs> it's probably sulking in the back. Yeah, he's sulking in the back. Uh, he's in the chat. He's in the he's in the captain's locker. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's wallowing self pity. I honestly think things could have gone better, but I don't know. This would have happened eventually. I think. Well, at least his it. first mate's not trying to throw him in the brig. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that person, I think, was. Not the first mate at the time. I'm pretty sure they were the captain. But I don't know. That's just stories that I've heard. Indeed. Well, since I was not there. Well, you do have one. Other, you, you do have one other ship, though. It's technically your defensive ship, but it's certainly. More... Yeah, well, it's time to be the offensive ship. Well, it's certainly definitely decent for offense. Um, you probably will need some sort of siege engineer for some of the siege equipment on it, though. Yep. Um, oh. it, it's a smaller ship, but you do have a freaking magic cargo hold thing, so that definitely will take care of any issues about carrying things. And, well, it doesn't yeah, require too many... Save that. Yeah. So, you definitely have options. 
Um, also, of course, I'm assuming you guys, I've heard of your 50% tax, so you probably have enough money to make a ship here if you really want to go in that direction. But you definitely earned the Thresher for the most part, even though you did get some help from me. But uh, I guess you're, oh. uh, I guess you'll just need to figure out what you need to do, because if you do continue as pirates, Chalice are always out there. <laughs> Side note, don't pat yourself on your back too hard. I could pretty much disable the entire crew right now. <laughs> That's just me being nice. I think that was, that was that was the fight I did confusion. That's right. Yeah, that was a good fight. You, you need to be on the ship more often. <laughs> I mean, well, I have my own business usually to take care of, which I guess what's uh I guess what's your next plan? I'm I'm still going to be here for quite some time, but I do have a ship available. Well, we kind of have to wait on you or build another ship. Well, um, Kalor can certainly handle his own, and Eric is certainly strong. Both Kalor and Eric together can definitely hold their own. So I can definitely offer my ship as a service to get you guys back to the island. Obviously, it won't be free because I'm giving up my ship for temporarily. But uh, it's probably a small price to pay compared to what you guys have gone through. Um. See that? I, of course, you can spend some of your funds that you have here to also, you know, prepare. So, I mean, if you have any of your own crafting to take care of or shopping to deal with, uh, try to make your size, uh, well, a bit more threatening that's definitely a, an option yeah well uh so definitely something to consider yeah how long are you gonna be here for or <sighs> how much longer how much longer that's a, let's see currently yeah, that's uh that's a... it's not a big deal like i said the let's see currently it is day 78 of the downtime which is day 316 of the campaign by the way hmm. almost uh, a year Yep, I've already upped my age by one. <laughs> Alright, so I have finished all my my favors. I, I'm currently crafting a headband. And that's going to take 36 days. A witching gown, which is going to take 35 days. A belt, that's going to take me four days. A sh uh, look at a Eric for a brief moment. Bracers for him will take a day. So yes, I'll be here for quite some time, a few months. But like I said, I am willing to offer the services of the... Uh, which is curse. Um, they have my crew has some capability. Since I finished the favors, I do have some capabilities of evading pursuit for the most part. As far as whether or not we'll ship out or build a new ship or what were the yeah, major I mean, decisions, you, basically, I'm yeah. waiting until uh, the captain. Right. I don't know. Snaps out of it. That's fine. I mean, yeah. So having the money to, to build a new ship is is all fine and dandy, but that yeah, it's gonna take a long time to build a ship. Right. And like I said, the Thresher is pretty kick ass. I mean, it's a little weird because it's a uh, one of those ships where you you have a person in the very very back steering it because it's steered with a uh, whatever it's called a rudder. Yeah, it's steered with a rudder instead of a wheel. Yeah. Um, but it is. I mean, that thing still has all its siege weapons, which means it has ten light ballista, a catapult, and uh, that fucking thing that spews out a bunch of arrows. Watch it, the sp yeah, springle. Yeah, the springle, and it's uh, it. I mean, it's it's by then the squibbing. By the time you get there, the squibbing will be done, so you'll be able to rename it. Uh, oh, already, man, the, squ the squibbing was already done. Yeah. Yeah, the squibbing was done probably by the time you arrived here. Um. Yeah, squibbing takes only a week. But yeah. Um. I mean, it's just a matter of what sort of stuff you want to do here while you're in Singor, um, before you head out. I mean, I doubt you want to stay here for three months. I mean, you might, unless you can figure out some downtime stuff to do, which, I mean, you could figure that out, I suppose. Um, oh yeah, one thing of advice, like I mentioned, you know, we've, you know, in the talk where I've mentioned, like, I'm always talking to Wes, it, I mean, the easiest way to figure out what stuff you can do is just ask questions, and the easiest way to kind of ask those questions is just figure out what your character wants to do. Like, a lot of times I'm just like, hey, Wes, my character's interested in this, and he'll be like, okay, you can do this, you might want to wait, or this is fucking retarded. You know? Usually it leads to those three uh, three uh, results. 
but yeah, I mean, that's what the kind of the DM's there for. So you definitely want to do any sort of planning and stuff. I mean, hopefully you guys are motivated to at least take it to the challenge for what they've done. <laughs> Now, the Chelish are an entire country, right? So, yeah, the Chelish, yes. well, I could do a check for, I guess. Uh, this will be at minus three because I don't actually have the headband done yet. Is it just uh, local? Uh, history? Uh, or, yeah, history okay. would do the best. Okay, I'm going to put minus three on it because I don't have a headband on yet. Uh, natural 20. All right, <laughs> so... The nation of Cheliacs was once an empire. Uh, they're one of the oldest empires of the, the setting. Uh, after their their patron god, that was pretty much their king, died, the country fractured, and in the years since has uh, sank into pretty much devil worship. Uh, their their nobility fucking like actively and uh, shit they they choose to right to consort with their new patron deity who is Asmodeus the uh, the pretty much the yeah. arch devil in charge of all of hell pretty much the devil. <laughs> So you can pretty much guarantee when you find middle to high tier fucking Chellish, you're going to find devils and all sorts of fucking that madness. Yeah. Also, they are a lawful evil nation, which means they are actually very, very organized and disciplined. So compared to the pirates, yes. we've been running, pirates and merchants we've been fighting, um, you probably have experienced they, their, their formations and their more tactical methods yep. of, of uh, fighting. Using both magic They are also whatever. Uh, one of the richest nations still in this setting, and they also maintain one of the largest standing militaries. So they're pretty much kind of like Russia. If Russia was big into consorting with fucking devils from hell. So Russia. I but mean, yeah, <laughs> Russia. <laughs> but like, yeah. To put it to put it into perspective, the, the queen. Releases a new history for the nation every three months. Like every three months, everything that you knew is outlawed, and you have to go by the new shit, or they pretty much kill you. Yep. Interesting. Some so, of their yeah, some of their cities like have literal like shadow demons just going down the hall, down the streets. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, is there a hypothetical uh, USA in this equation? Yes. Uh, yes. And Andoran the country right next to Chelyax. If you look on the map of... I might have it here, let's see. If you look on the Galerion map... In a nutshell, or... Yeah, you can use the in a nutshell, because actually... Here, I got this too. I'll get, you, I'll get you the link. This thing's a little bit more manipulable. Oh, yeah, the... Uh, so, thing... if you... yeah. so if you look at the... Uh... The, in a nutshell map, the big red in the center that says Nazis yeah. is pretty much Chelyax. the that's that's Chelyax. Uh to the north where it says more Nazis is their puppet state. Uh however, uh further north where it says here be adventurers, that's that's yeah. Varesia. And uh, the capital city of Varesia is also uh Chelish City, because all the, a lot of that shit used to be part of their empire. Right. So they maintain influence there, and south of you uh, is the colony of Sargava, which also used to be Chelish. Right. Um, so what, yeah, the Chelish also, have. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. So the Chelish end up having interests pretty much on all around the areas you're working on. Yeah. Just besides hating pirates because you're chaotic assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, speaking of uh, Blood Cove, which is north of Sengor, uh, that place actually has Chelish embassies in it. So, yeah, they're, they're all over the place. Um, obviously, uh, um, obviously, Sargavik broke off from um, Cheliax, and they've been trying to keep their independence. Obviously, uh, the Chelish have been interested in taking that back, and 
for the most part, one of the things that's been a really big deterrent for them taking anything back or getting more influence is actually the pirates. So they really do not like us. Because, <laughs> yeah, we're kind of a thorn in their side. And as you, in as, fact, you, yeah. uh, you recall that as you were fighting the uh, Kenneth, the Hell Knight, that his, uh, uh, since Hell Knights are organized into, uh, into orders, you notice that his order, the Order of the Scourge, which is meant to hunt down and stamp out lawlessness in general, has a, uh, has a chapter that operates out of Sargava. So yeah, they're definitely still trying to play around here. And, you know, it's not really a question of whether or not you can beat the Chelish. It's a matter of making yourself uh, too much of a hassle to deal with, or too expensive to deal with. And that's generally how you have to deal with a large military force. So things you, probably, like, things you would probably want to consider is find better ways to run away, or find ways to be very, very skilled in taking out uh, Chelish military and Chelish ships. So but I know that... this is. I was basically trying to get to the point where uh, I have a crazy idea. Okay. I don't know how this is going to work, but is it possible to find a say like a enemy of Cheliax and work as privateers for them? That way we can get some capital doing some, you know. Dirty uh, work for them. Well, while it would, it would pretty much nullify the entire point of the adventure path. Right. Like, going off to be privateers for, well, one, the Chaliax's prime enemy, Andoran, uh, would probably turn you down simply because you're pirates, and they don't like pirates any more than Chaliax does. There's, there's Sargava, which, I mean, Sargava is definitely willing to pay protection money for, uh, they they've been technically paying the uh, you know the pirates to kind of have, you know essentially provide yeah, some protection. Yeah, so you could you become you could become legitimate free captains, and right. then go to Sargava and you know get in on that protection racket. Right, but that's for free captains, which we're not, we're technically not. So if we were to do that right now, we would actually be stomping on the free captain turf, which would probably anchor some pirates. Not that, though, I guess compared to what you guys just fought, pirates are probably at least of your concerns. <laughs> but there are probably stronger pirates out there as well. Yeah. I mean, but, it's just an idea. Yeah, I mean, like, for the most part, like, working towards becoming a free captain is definitely an option. And once you become a free captain, you actually gain the ability to start making political alliances with other free captains. And so at that point, you know, you don't have to find a nation. You could fucking forge your own giant pirate alliance. Right. That's the dream. That's so. Don't Why make, with that is actually. Your own. Yeah. That, that is actually kind of uh. Night The the tack right. that the adventure path does eventually take. Right. Later, dude. Yep. Yep. It's just a matter of you, kind of solidifying that. Uh, well, one that you want to be one of those and uh, kind of set up whatever. Um, obviously, some things you also probably want to consider is you have an island right now, and that you island eventually, the if they if the Chalice know about your island, uh, you're going to have some trouble there too. Yeah, we'll probably need to uh, bolster the defenses. Yeah, you also need to figure out what you want to do with that island, because right now all it has is a dock. Are we going to dry dock? In a regular dock, right? Yeah. You have that, and that's it. In fact, right now, the people that work at the dry dock right now sleep in tents. <laughs> All right, then I guess the first uh, <laughs> order of business would probably be houses. Right. So, I mean, that's some stuff you can definitely discuss with uh, Wes, like, you know, during the two weeks break and stuff like that. You, obviously, uh, some things you can also can do is you can talk through, uh, talk to your fellow crew members and stuff and talk to Avon and all that good stuff as well, so... Yeah, chat it up. Definitely chat it up. <laughs> I'm just I'm not certain how much I can do since Avon is technically the uh, the Lord of the Rock. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, well, I mean, to be honest, you were here when 
it was just you and Brian. You went down to Sangor and pretty much made all the decisions without him anyways, so. Right. Ah, yes. The Shadow Lord of the Rock. <laughs> there you go, man. Every time yeah. Aven talks, like, that's a good puppy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, like, honestly, as far as, like, knowing what you can and can't do and stuff, I mean, I... I'm playing this by ear. I mean, I usually, I've not been in really in a campaign where I've had this much kind of freedom. So I kind of just been like, all right, what sort of stuff does my character interested in? Sometimes it's just fluff. Like sometimes I just like, I'm going to see about buying some religious text just because I was interested in looking up other gods besides Besmara because there's obviously multiple gods in this setting. And so it's just really just kind of figuring out what you want to do. And now I kind of got a little bit more specific and been like, all right, you know what? Screw the, screw the rock because, you know, Avon got it. And I was like, well, I'll just see about, uh, Kind of seeing what I could do for making a fleet, and start to kind of like you know trying to get extra ships, get more crew, and kind of just been exploring. I don't know if it's going to actually pan out or do anything. It's just something my character wanted to do. Um, you switched to uh, Tidewater Rock. Yeah. 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 Switch to the map. Yeah. Yes. In that case. So those two green areas are the last bits of um, terraforming that uh, Chandra is doing that I paid for. So yeah, and that should clear out a lot of swamp and give you pretty a lot of decent yeah, place that's, at least. That's build. already finished, so that that's already technically terraformed. I just haven't gone back to update the map yet. No worries. So yeah, I would now that I'm I'm thinking a little bit more RL. You do have that treasury, so, I mean, you obviously don't need all that for a ship, so you can definitely use that for, um, you know, city building or whatever the hell you're going to do with this island. <laughs> yeah, man. But, I mean, honestly, getting some housing is probably a good idea, because, honestly, people probably don't want to work here if they're going to be stuck in fucking tents all the time. <laughs> yeah. So and, I know, I know yeah. the original strategy was to not make this into some sort of and sell things out of it and all that nonsense. Right. You could but still make it as like a base or something along those lines. I was going to say, but what if we did that anyway? That's something you like, definitely get some, figure out. Get some capital f flowing through here. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of why I was doing kind of the fleet stuff. Like, kind of, because, I mean, at some point we're going to get tired of freaking fighting those, you know, those little merchant ships that literally take two rounds to beat. Like so I was just like, yeah. <laughs> have it be like a, a pirate port, basically. It's definitely an, it's definitely an option. It definitely has its issue. it does you know potentially have flaws where you can you you, will, I mean obviously the bigger you make that thing, it's going to draw more attention, which is good and bad. Yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah. right. The the larger the the fleet presence at the rock, the right. more likely somebody's not gonna be like, oh yeah, let's fucking attack that place with the uh, <laughs> all the fucking pirate ships. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's definitely an option. Like, and for the most part, I mean, whatever you're thinking, man, could just Try it. I mean, worst that's going to happen is you lose the island. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the king of the island. <laughs> exactly. Make my own island with blackjack yeah. and hookers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. This this is one of the best campaigns to just try shit, man. Because not only are you going to have you have the freedom of a ship to be able to fucking sail around and do stuff, but this this game alone up till now, like at this point, has had more capital involved than I've ever given any character below like level 10 in all of my other games combined pretty much. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money in this. 